to. Wars are a result of lies. The Vietnam War and the push for US involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. A lie. Here, here. The Iraq War famously is a result of lies. Wars in Somalia are a result of lies. The Second World War and the German invasion of Poland was a result of carefully constructed lies. That is war by media. Let us ask ourselves Se encuentra of the complicit media, which is the majority of the Austral. mainstream press. What is the average death count attributed el Ecuador, to each journalist? El Ecuador, to each journalist. Otro territorio, el Reino Unido, en un hogar que se ha convertido en su prisión. When we understand that war has este come about Andres, as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public Unidos. and the publics all over Europe Julian and other countries, Assange. then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. Dicen que la publicidad es el aspecto emocional que engendra la exploración, la investigación y el aprendizaje. Pero todo se complica cuando los Ahora se están abriendo nuevos horizontes. Y se Todos somos conscientes de que estamos diciendo adiós a un mundo to an optimistic understanding because if wars can be started by lies truth can be started can be started by truth por eso con mi penúltima energía profesional me propongo viajar a esa frontera para conocer y escuchar a quienes están diseñando el nuevo tiempo Voy a dejar al descubierto mi bendita curiosidad para intentar desentrañar esa gran incógnita. ¿Cómo será el mundo cuando ya no esté? El futuro de la información está librando en estos tiempos una batalla trascendental. Internet se ha convertido en la sede del quinto poder. En el que se almacenan filtraciones, cables, documentos, archivos e informaciones encriptadas que circulan sin aparente control por la red. Julian Assange es actor muy principal en una partida decisiva de cuyo resultado dependen desde los secretos de los estados hasta la privacidad de las personas. Assange, entre la utopía de Internet como espacio de libertad y la distopía de Internet como espacio ocupado por el ojo gigante de en la crisis de Ucrania, mientras el gobierno de Kiev mantiene contactos diplomáticos al más alto nivel. Crimea quiere ratificar esta decisión en un referéndum de urgencia convocado para el próximo 16 de marzo. Un acuerdo, Carlos Franganillo, que eleva el tono de esta crisis. Sí, además, fuentes del gobierno crimeo citadas por la agencia Reuters eh, dicen que desde este momento ese decreto ya está en vigor y que las fuerzas armadas de Ucrania que están en territorio de Crimea son consideradas como un ejército ocupante. Solo las tropas rusas pueden estar eh, en territorio de Ucrania, según el viceprimer ministro crimeo. Moscú apuesta por la política de hechos consumados y ha controlado totalmente eh, esta región y es muy posible eh, que esa anexión se formalice definitivamente a partir de ese referéndum del 16 de marzo. Hay que tener en cuenta que esta es la única región de Ucrania con mayoría de ciudadanos de origen ruso, además los sectores prorrusos se controlan todos los resortes del poder y también van a ser responsables de organizar ese referéndum en una región tomada totalmente por los soldados de Moscú. La 
minoría tártara que está muy presente aquí en Crimea, aunque apenas representa un 12% de la población, eh, ha pedido ayuda a la comunidad internacional y llama al boicot de esta minoría, está eh, aliada tradicionalmente con el nuevo el poder de Kiev. Vladimir Putin, el presidente ruso, ya ha estudiado esa petición de anexión de Crimea con su Consejo de Seguridad Nacional. Las noticias de lo que ocurre dentro del Parlamento llegan al exterior. Aquí se reúnen decenas de ciudadanos partidarios de la anexión a Rusia rodeados por voluntarios cosacos. La votación de los diputados y el referéndum del día 16 puede ser el paso definitivo para separarse de Kiev. Tenemos que hacerlo muy rápido, de lo contrario podemos perder el momento, dice esta mujer que teme que las autoridades de Kiev arruinen los planes. Desde Moscú los medios de comunicación han azuzado el miedo a que la extrema derecha, representada en el nuevo gobierno central, persiga a los ciudadanos de origen ruso. Y muchos están indignados por la decisión de Kiev, que ha rebajado el estatus de la lengua rusa a pesar de que ahora estudia corregirla. Ucrania nos machaca, nos prohíbe hablar en ruso, pensar en ruso. Pero esta es mi patria, no tenemos otro sitio, solo puedo hablar ruso. El referéndum se celebrará dentro de 10 días en una región en la que el Estado ucraniano ya no tiene ningún poder real y donde las tropas rusas y las milicias a favor de Moscú controlan ya todos los puntos clave. Wars are a result of lies. The Vietnam War and the push for US involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. A lie. Here, here. The Iraq War famously is a result of lies. Wars in Somalia are a result of lies. The Second World War. Yeah. Let us ask ourselves of the complicit media, which is the majority of the mainstream press, what is the average death count? attributed to each journalist. When we understand that wars come about as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public and the publics all over Europe and other countries, then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. And why one might think that that should lead us to a state of despair, that the reality that is constructed around us is constructed by liars is constructed by people who are close to those that they are meant to be policing. It should lead us also to an optimistic understanding because if wars can be started by lies, truth can be started, peace can be started by truth. What was it like for you to visit Seeing Julian Belmarsh prison? I was quite affected by it. I mean, this is uh, this is one of the UK's most notorious jails. It's a high security prison uh, where they put the worst of the worst: murderers, uh, terrorists, uh, the worst of the worst. And uh, I was quite alarmed by the conditions in which Julian Assange is being. Uh, imprisoned. I was quite alarmed by the effect on his health. When you boil all this down, this is about an Australian journalist publicising hard evidence of US war crimes, of the US being deeply embarrassed and wanting to get even, and the Australian government happy to go along for the ride because they believe that our relationship with Washington is more important 
than the welfare of Australian citizens and the fundamental right of Australian citizens to justice. How much power do you think Scott Morrison has in convincing the President of the United States to let this go? We will not know how much power Scott Morrison has in this until he tries. And so far, he hasn't tried. Now, this is a real test of the leadership of Scott Morrison. This is a real test of whether or not he believes an Australian citizen, an Australian journalist, uh, is owed justice. Um, Scott Morrison needs to pick up the phone to Joe Biden and say, this madness must end. Please drop the extradition. Please allow Julian Assange to return here. Mind you, it's also a test of the alternative Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Uh, it's not good enough for uh, Mr Albanese to be making uh, comments inside the uh, Labor Party room. He also needs to get in front of a camera and tell the Australian people what he would do if elected Prime Minister, uh, if Anthony Albanese is elected Prime Minister, uh, you know, we need to have a commitment from him beforehand that he will pick up the phone to Joe Biden. I mean, you know, we make much of the fact that we have a, a very close bilateral relationship with the United States. Uh, well, it's about time we, lean, we leaned on that and capitalised on it. It's, it's time for Scott Morrison to pick up the phone and to end this madness. And I think our relationship with the US right now is so warm that that phone call would be successful. Has Scott Morrison engaged with you at all on why he won't pick up the phone? No, I mean, I, I, I've obviously exchanged correspondence with the Prime Minister about this, but they keep batting it away. There's only one thing that matters to this Australian government, and for that matter, its predecessors. Um, as far back as the previous Labor government, there was no sympathy for Julian Assange. A succession of governments, LNP and Labor, are all putting our relationship with Washington ahead of the fundamental rights of Australian citizens and the importance of them enjoying justice. Um, it's really chilling for all Australians who are left wondering, if they get in strife, will the Australian government stand up for them. Even if we are guilty of something, we are all entitled to justice. And no country in the world, including the US, has global jurisdiction to come after whoever they want for whatever reason they want and for their, for their, um, their country of origin to just roll over and get their tummy tickled. What is your view of Julian Assange trying to carve out a normal life in such unnormal circumstances. He now has two young sons. He's now just got married. It's a very bittersweet. That's right. They may have played a major role in over overthrowing, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, what's his name was Salvador Allende. Uh, yeah, fine. Okay. He was democratically elected. Right, okay. Is that okay to yeah. overthrow a democratically elected government? Is know, it okay? It, it depends on what your national security interests are. Are you denying that Pinochet caused huge suffering I in that don't, country? I don't, I, I, huge, I don't buy. That, that he committed crimes, I agree. But okay? it's worth it. Huh? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Those crimes are yeah, worth yeah, it. Yeah, but, uh, Sometimes, unfortunately, uh, things have to be changed in a rather uh, ugly way. Do you really think yeah, they're... I mean, no, so. you, you have... are, are they all are they all conning us, lying us, yeah. amnesty?